morning, little dudes. All right, today is day four of our rocket build. Day four. Man, we're really getting along. Yesterday, yes, oh, yeah, why am I here? <laughs> Dude, he's still asleep. He, oh, he's like, Mr. I always wake up at four o'clock in the morning. Well, it's 4.45 right now in the morning. It's peaceful, it's quiet, and he's like, <sighs> he fell asleep on the couch watching some movie yesterday. <laughs> it's so funny, he's still in there. Anyway, dude, let's go ahead and get started. I wanna go ahead and do the rest of this video because I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get going. All right, you're gonna need this, and inside of that, we're gonna pull out the instructions. So we've got our instructions um, out, and we're gonna open up the instructions to page two. Remember when you cut the uh, guide out of this, that little round, ooh, he still has it left here, that little round piece of paper, uh, that, when you cut that out, just to the left of it is a quadrilaterally shaped object. You know, it doesn't matter how carefully you cut this out. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, you can cut, just get the general shape of it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut around the shape like this. And whoosh, just like that. So, you know, that's, that's fine for that. But now I'm gonna, it, it just makes it easier to cut. Now I'm gonna cut that down, and I'm not being real exact about this. Look at that, I am cutting it just along the edge, you know, and, and it might be a little bit bigger, it could be a little crooked, it's, it, this is okay, we don't have to be exact with this, right? We don't have to be exact. So I'm gonna take the manual and I'm gonna put the, the instruction manual aside for right now. Get those papers out of the way. And what step are we doing in the instructions? Right now, we're doing this, called installing the shock cord. And we're gonna follow the step one, we're cutting that out. Step two, we're gonna glue it in. Don't start gluing yet, because I got a special way to glue. So, and, and, I'll, and I'll show you and explain that to you. Um, step three, four, five, and we're gonna stick that in, we're gonna glue that inside, and we're gonna be good to go. All right, so we've got that. Now we need our shock cord out. Our shock cord is inside the Ziploc baggie and it should be inside the parachute bag. Okay, so inside the parachute bag, yep, there it is. And I'm gonna pull this shock cord out of that bag if you have to get into the bag, that's fine. Um, be very careful, little dudes. Be very careful that you don't cut the parachute because that parachute has to be able to open and, and provide enough friction coming through the Earth's atmosphere to slow it down. So don't cut holes in it or don't cut the string because yeah, he won't let you launch if it's not gonna be able to be recovered, so be careful. All right, I know. You're sitting there saying, Mr. Horvath, that's not a shock cord, dude. That's a rubber band. No, it is not a rubber band. This is a shock cord, dude. It's a shock cord. It might look like it's a rubber band. It might smell like it's rubber band. It might look like a rubber band, but it's not a rubber band, dude. It's called a shock cord. Therefore, there's a specific purpose for this. And the purpose of this shock cord is to attach the body tube to the nose cone and parachute. Kind of like a leash on a dog, except this is stretchy and flexible. And I'll explain why, but this is not a rubber band. So, serious time. If your teacher sees you flicking somebody with this and treating this like a rubber band or shooting this like a rubber band, you will have an instant pre-referral like that. 
okay? So dude, this is rocket stuff. Let's have fun with rockets. Don't do something silly and get yourself into trouble, dude. Because if you do that, your teacher might take the rocket away from you, dude. And then you're gonna be sitting there watching everybody else launch their rockets and you're not gonna get one. Dude, so let's be cool about this. This is not a rubber band. It looks like it, but it's not. It is elastic. Yes, it's a shock cord. So let's use it for the purpose that it's, it's meant for. Agree? Good? All right. So now I said that. that. That's your warning, dudes. Okay. So moving forward. We are going to begin to glue our shock cord onto this little piece of paper. Okay. So when I look at the instruction manual, I open up the instruction manual and it shows me all of the steps, and we've already cut this out. Step one, step two, it talks about gluing and it shows how to fold it. Step three talks about folding it again. Step four, uh, you're, you're holding it, you're squeezing it. Step five, these are the steps that I'm gonna cover with you, okay? And when we're all done, this is gonna be cool. But you can't use a lot of glue with this. If you use a lot of glue on this piece of paper, this piece of paper gets wet, it gets soggy, it just disintegrates like, I don't know, like wet toilet paper or something. You know, it just blah, 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 it just falls apart and, and it, it makes it a mess. So just listen, man, just a little bit of glue, okay? Just a little bit. glue. Remember how to open this? It's not a twisty, it's a pulley. So you got to pull it. Oh, there it goes. Okay, good. So, and, and it's a, you know what? Sometimes the glue, do you see that yellow stuff that's on the tip of that? Sometimes you get a little bit careless and, and it plugs that. Um, so right here at the top, um, you know, that, that stuff might have to just pull that off. Ah, see? All of that stuff that just came off. That plugs that hole. And now, it's like a little birdie. <laughs> All right. What we're going to do is we're going to take our glue and we're going to run a bead of glue diagonally, diagonally, you know what diagonal means, right? Diagonal means from one corner to the other, not straight up and down, but from one corner to the other. You know, some people call it kitty corner, some people call it catty corner, some people call it what it is, diagonally. It's running diagonally from the upper left-hand corner to the upper, no, which way? Let me stand on my head. Upper left-hand corner to the bottom right-hand corner. And Maybe you guys looking at the camera, it might be this way, upper left-hand corner to the bottom right-hand corner. I'm not sure, but it's gotta be diagonal, okay? Diagonal. All right, um, so we're gonna use our glue and we're gonna run a bead of glue, just a little string. Dudes, you don't need a lot of glue with this. Please don't do a lot of glue. You're gonna ruin it if you put a lot of glue. You're going to tip this upside down and you're going to squeeze the bottle just a little bit and it's almost like just let gravity pull that glue out of there. See, that's just, that's it right there. That's it and that is almost too much glue too, dudes. So you don't need a lot. We're going to take the shock cord now and we're going to lay the shock cord diagonally across this paper diagonally, right on top of the glue. I'm just gonna move the glue around a little bit over top of that shock cord. Cause I did have a lot of glue on that. So we ran that, we ran that little bit of glue across this, just ran that a little bit of glue and then we tacked the shock cord down on this piece of paper. Okay, so the shock cord is starting to attach, it's starting to get sticky there. 
And, and that's exactly what we want. And we want it diagonally. We want it running across that so that, and, and the, the reason that we're running it diagonally is because we're gonna fold this. And when we fold this, we're gonna fold this over to the next line. And when we do that, notice how the shock cord folds next to the shock cord. It doesn't fold over the top of each other, so it's not layering on top of each other, making a bulge inside the body tube. And the body tube of the rocket, you don't want that bulge in there because you've got to, you've got to keep it as flat as possible so, so that the payload, your parachute, can come out. If you've got a big bulge uh, in there that's sticking up, Dude, your parachute's gonna get stuck in there and then the parachute's not gonna come out and your rocket's gonna come up and it's gonna go ah, right in the ground and those are not very fun. It, they're funny to watch as long as it doesn't hurt anybody, but those are, we call those lawn darts and you know, it just, what those mean is, it just means that you didn't prepare your rocket properly, you know, and and it's not good because it destroys the rocket and it could hurt somebody, you know? I mean, it could come down and land on an ant. It could hurt an ant and we don't want to hurt ants. So, make sure that you're doing this the right way. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and fold this down next. So what I'm gonna do is I, I'm gonna add just a little bit of glue right here in the corner, just bloop, just a little bit. And that was even more than what I wanted bloop, just a little bit, okay? I'm gonna take this glue now and I'm gonna spread this glue, just a, a thin layer. You see what I'm doing? I, I'm just taking this and spreading that around. It's just a thin layer of glue. I, I don't need a lot of glue. And I, and I see students all the time, bleh. They don't, you don't need a lot of glue. So just a little bit. Again, remember, if you use too much glue, this paper is gonna get wet and it's just gonna crumble and fall apart. And, you know, then it's not gonna work. Now, if that happens to you, if you do use too much glue, it's okay, it's okay. I'd rather do it right the first time uh, and then not have to do it again. But if it does, just try to unfold it, get the glue off of the shock cord the best that you can, and then just get another piece of paper, um, you know, maybe some paper from the copy machine, you know, and, and cut out uh, a similar shape, just like that, and, uh, and just do it again, you know, and it's okay. Um, have I ever had that happen to me? Yeah, dude, several times. That's why I'm telling you, I, I know how to fix it. If it goes bad, just cut another piece of paper out and do it again. It doesn't even have to be this shape. It could be just a rectangle shape. We just need some paper in there to help hold it in place. That's all. So, all right, let's go ahead and get this folded. We are going to fold this one, and we're gonna fold this over here, just like that. See that? Now I'm gonna push this down. I'm pushing it down, I'm pushing it down. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing all of the glue out from where that shock cord is at. And you can see, if you're careful, you can see the shock cord and how the shock cord comes in and then down that way. It's laying nice and flat in there, dude. Also, keep your fingers clean from the glue. If you get glue on your fingers and then you get it on the outside, it's gonna get sticky and you're gonna tear the paper up. So keep your fingers away from the glue, try to keep that off. All right, we gotta fold it one more time. So here we go. We're gonna fold it down just like that. Yeah, getting my fingers, I get a little bit of glue. See, as the glue squishes out of the side, it gets on my fingers, and I just use a little bit of friction, heats it up, dries it, and it just flakes right off and it goes away. Okay, so you see how I'm pushing this down? Now, see how clean that is? All right, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I, I agree, this is looking really good, man. Um, if you used too much glue, it's not gonna look like this. It's going to be sticky and mushy and it's the paper, paper is gonna be sticking to your fingers like, like Mr. Horvath and super glue. <laughs> I'm stuck on paper. So, and we don't wanna be stuck on paper, so. All right, so that's good. Now, 
Notice how the shock cord is coming out of this corner. All right, that's perfect. That's what we want to do. Now we get to glue this into the body tube of the rocket. So we've got the rocket and we're going to glue this in. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to hunt for that nose cone. That nose cone should be in your bag. That's the pointy thing, right? So the nose cone goes on top of your rocket, just like that, all right? Now, the question that you're gonna have is, well, how deep do I put the shock cord? Well, you wanna put it down deep enough so that you can get this nose cone on and off of your rocket. You do not wanna put it down here for a closer look. You do not want to put it right here on the tip because if you glue it right there, your, your nose cone is not going to go in. So you want to put this down deep enough and I'm just going to say to you, put it in there as deep as you can, okay? Um, I, you know, these, these little, these fat little fingers, they don't get in there very well. Um, so I usually use my, my ring finger to get deep in there and I get it back in there quite a ways. Um, if we were going to be specific about it, um, I would say that you could kind of line this up like this, put this in uh, where the edge of the nose cone lines up, if you want to do that, and then you can mark, you can mark on your paper or on your body tube somewhere about right there. Now, if we're measuring that, I would say that that is just a little over an inch. It's actually an inch and one-fourth. So it's one inch and one-fourth of an inch in. About, okay? Um, do I ever measure? No, I really don't. I just put some glue in there and I stick it in and I get it in there as deep as I can but I'm very aware of how deep that nose cone goes, okay? So make sure that you don't put it right on the tip, make sure that that nose cone goes in. If you can't get your nose cone on, your rocket won't fly. All right, so I'm gonna take my glue. I'm gonna take my glue and I'm going to apply some glue. I'm gonna stick this in and I'm gonna apply some glue to the inside of that and if you can see it in there, there's the glue sitting in there. All right, just a gob of glue. Now, we're going to insert this in there, just like that. Notice how the shock cord is coming out of this end. So we're gonna insert it in that direction. And I'm gonna slide this in as far as I can, and then I'm gonna push it down, and I could feel it pushing into the glue, and the glue is starting to come up over the top of it. I am squishing the glue down. See, I got glue on my finger. See it, remember, if you're gonna wipe that off, it's, it's okay, the glue's not gonna hurt you, but you can wipe off the glue on a paper towel. Remember, don't wipe it on your clothes, you're gonna get in trouble and we don't want you getting in trouble. And don't wipe it on your, on your neighbor's clothes because remember what I said before, that would be naughty, naughty. All right, so I am sticking my finger in and I'm pushing this down, okay? I am just constantly pushing it down, pushing it down. I am taking the glue and I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure that it's pushed down so so that it's flat, okay? And it's taking the shape of the body tube in there, okay? So I'm pushing it down, pushing it down. All right, I think that looks really good. I think that's good. Now, again, why are we pushing it down? And why am I emphasizing that? Well, if we look through the body tube, you should be able to see that there's really nothing in the way of the parachute. It's all flat and rounded to the surface of 
the body tube of the rocket there. So that's what we want. We don't want anything really sticking up and taking up that space. We want our parachute to be able to slide in and out uh, very easily. Okay, And just to double check, I have mine about that far in and here's my pencil mark. So I am in far enough. I know that my my nose cone is going to go in and I'm not going to have any issues. I can't put it in right now because I've got the shock cord in the way. So the shock cord is going to have to uh, uh, hang outside for a little bit. Now this has to be left alone inside there. Don't mess with this. If you don't want this dangling around, you could take this and kind of wrap it around like this. But um, I don't know. I never do that. I just leave it dangle. Just like that. I just let it dangle out of there. So we need to let that rest. We need to uh, leave that alone so it's going to cure. Um, you know, it, it will start to set up in 15 minutes. Uh, you can handle it within 30, but it takes a full 24 hours, a whole day for that glue to really cure and bond the way that it should be. Uh, so, you know, don't, don't tug on it or anything uh, until tomorrow. Okay? All right. Next step. We've got to glue the launch lug on, dude. Okay? That is a problem that Mr. Horvath has. He forgets the launch lug all the time. Dude, he'll get his rockets painted. And then he looks at it and goes, oh, I forgot the launch lug. He does it all the time. He's even built rockets for people and delivered them to them. And they walk out to the launch pad and with no launch lug, you can't fly it. It, it has to have a launch lug on there. Now, do you remember a while back when we identified that line and we marked it as LL and then we put little X's on it and we were putting those X's on it to say, don't put a fin here because this is not a fin line, this is a launch lug, launch lug line. So the launch lug LL is where the launch lug goes. All right, so just like the fins, we're gonna have to prepare the surface of the body tube. That means that we take a little piece of sandpaper and we scratch off a little spot right above the fins. That's, that's where it's gonna go, just above the fins. Okay, so we're gonna scratch that off there. And then we're also going to take the shiny stuff off of the, the launch lug. Just don't sand a lot of this material off. You just wanna scratch it a little bit, okay? And you know, when it comes to you, it's nice and smooth, right? The glue doesn't like smooth. If you've got something, you know, something smooth, the glue just sits on the surface of it and then it slides off. Sandpaper has little itty bitty tiny pieces of rock if you looked at it under a microscope. It's like little pieces of rock glued onto paper. That's why they call it sandpaper because the, the little rocks are like sand and they glue it on paper. And that sandpaper gouges grooves into whatever you're sanding. It, it just scratches into it. Well, the glue can get into those grooves, okay? It gets into those grooves and it attaches inside and it sticks really, really well that way. So that's why. All right, how are we going to attach the launch lug to the body tube? Just like the fin. We're gonna take our little bit of glue, just a bloop full of glue, bloop, adopting his word. <laughs> it is kind of catchy. Bloop. And we're going to then run this on top of the launch lug. Just like that. See? Looking at it. And my other finger is doing this because of the glue that I just had on there. I'm using friction to heat that up and it just comes right off. So, I don't know. Maybe it's going to make a mess and your janitor probably won't be happy with me. All right, so we're gonna take this and we see where the line is at. I'm going to place it just on that line, just like that. Now I'm looking at that line and I'm tapping it down so that it is in line with the line. 
And that's it. That's all we have to do. It's that easy. All right. So because this is supposed to be straight, just like the fins, we also need to sight down that line and we need to look at it and we need to make sure that that, um, that, that, that launch lug is going the same direction as the line. And I'm noticing that my bot the bottom of my launch lug is a little bit this way. So I'm just gonna bump the bottom over. Again, I'm closing one eye, sighting down my pencil line, and I can see that my launch lug is now perfectly straight with that. And I'm just giving it a couple of taps. Tap, tap, tap glue on the side just like that. I'm kind of cleaning that up a little bit. All right. And this is good. This is good. We have our shock cord in and we've got our launch lug on the uh, body tube and we are getting closer to launch day. Okay. Word of caution here. Word of caution. Everybody listening? All right, this is important. I have seen students go to the flight line and present their rocket to the RSO. The RSO is the range safety officer and that person is in charge of safety. That RSO is going to examine your rocket. It's gonna to check to make sure that the fins are on strong, make sure that the fins are straight, and he's gonna ask questions about packing. Um, and, and probably, they will probably pack the parachute for you. Uh, but one thing they're going to look at is they're going to look at that launch lug. And it's very important to make sure that there's nothing in here. I have had students come to the, the, the launch line and have this launch lug filled with glue. They just got a little crazy with the glue and glue got inside that. Remember, there's going to be a rod that has to go through that you, this, this launch rod, okay, it's a, it's a metal rod, and this rocket goes down on that rod and goes through that all the way up the length of that rocket. And if there's glue inside that, you can't launch it, okay? You just, you can't launch it. Uh, why? The launch lug goes on that launch rod. These rockets are fin stabilized. You've heard me say that before. They're fin stabilized. So these rockets require air traveling past the rockets, creating some friction on the sides of the rockets to, in, it, to, to steer it, okay? Um, so the, the, the fins help to stabilize it, but when the rocket is sitting still, there's zero stability. So as soon as that engine ignites, and the, the motor provides thrust and it starts to move forward, there's not enough air movement over top of the fins, and it's possible that the thrust of that motor could kick the rocket sideways, and then it finally starts getting some aerodynamic stability and it goes sideways. Well, that wouldn't be very nice if you're out in a field and there's a cow standing over there, would it? It wouldn't be very funny, and it wouldn't be funny if it was shooting into a, a, a crowd of people either. So, you know, we gotta be we gotta be safe about this. So that's why we use launch rods. Bigger rockets like the ones in here use launch rails. It's a bigger rail, heavier rail. Um, you know, so these things have to have that stability. It has to be going at least. 30 miles an hour by the time it leaves the end of that rod in order for it to be stable. And that's what the launch lug does. So the, you can't just take a rocket and set it out at the end of your driveway or out in the street or in the middle of a parking lot without some stability and light it and expect it to go straight up. It's just not going to do that. And it's risky because it could go sideways. And rockets are not supposed to go sideways. Missiles go sideways, and missiles are not good. Rockets are good. Okay, and we build rockets, man. And we build cool rockets, too. We have the shock cord in. We have the launch lug on. Mr. Hoorbath, why do we have to have a shock cord? Well, the shock cord, little dude, is now going to be attached to the nose cone. And it's kind of the leash of the nose cone. Um, the nose cone has to be attached to this. 
when the motor burns, there's a section of the motor that's called a delay charge. And that is just a delay, it just smokes. It sends out a trail of smoke and that helps you see it when it's way up there. And then as soon as that delay charge is done burning, then it gets into another charge that fires the opposite direction inside the body tube and, and it pushes the nose cone off and it spits the parachute out. Um, so if you don't have this attached to your body tube, this will be attached to your parachute and it will float off that way and your rocket will flip flop down and crash into the ground separately. So we want to keep all of this together. Not only that, but think about this. This rocket, when it's launched, is going to be going maybe 100 miles an hour. Okay, because they move fast. They're rockets. So they go up really fast. As this is going up 100 miles an hour, that deployment charge is going to fire and it's going to shoot this nose cone off just like a bullet out of a gun. It just poof, shoots that off. Well, now the nose cone is going 100 miles an hour with this and maybe another 30 miles an hour faster, maybe even more. So it's now the nose cone is going 130 miles an hour and it's going to get to the point where it tightens up and, and if you you don't have, if you've got just a piece of string on there, it could snap the string and break the string. This is an elastic. It's kind of like a shock absorber on a car or, or a, a, you know, your bicycle. Uh, it, it just goes out, stretches, slows it down, and brings it back, okay? So, pretty important piece to have on there. Um, so that's what the purpose of the shock cord is. It keeps everything together like a leash, and it, and it helps to keep your rocket safe um, and, and bring it back down. Dude, it's very easy to push a button and send the rockets up, but it's very hard, it's very hard to get them back down safely so you can use them again. Um, you know, very hard. We, we've had issues with every one of these rockets and you know, that rocket right there, that has not flown properly. The first time that that one flew, he had a, a parachute that was too small. It hit the ground so hard it kinked the, the body tube. He changed out the parachute and then it got stuck inside the body tube and it came up and went, yeah, and it just drilled itself right into the ground. Uh, man, all those people were standing around there too and it was it was close to the flight line when that happened, but he had it far enough away and he had it planned so at least he knew what he was doing. He kept everybody safe, but destroyed the rocket and he spent days, months rebuilding that one. The hardest part is getting it back down and you spend the most amount of time uh, you know, on recovery and the parachute. So just know that it's easy to get them up. It's hard to get them back down. Okay. So we've got the launch lug on, we've got our shock cord in. That's had a little bit of time to set, so that's okay, but just be mindful of it. Just be aware that it's there and try not to bump it. You know, just, just be careful with it. If you bump it and it's off, you're gonna have to realign it so that it's straight down the body tube. But right now we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do two things. We're going to tie a knot into this, so that it ties this around the nose cone, okay? Now, it's a simple little knot. It's not hard to do. You guys are masters at tying knots. Your shoe, your shoelaces, man, you get those things knotted up like crazy. So you guys are pros at that. Um, so that's all we're gonna do with this. So here we go. We're gonna take this nose cone and we're gonna take the shock cord and we're gonna slide it through the hole of that nose cone. Oh, there may be a plastic piece in that nose cone. Sometimes they come with a plug that's in there. And if that's the case, you can push it with your finger this way and you could push it that way. You might have to use the tip of an eraser to, to get that to move back and forth. If you can't get it out, okay, take it to your teacher. Your teacher's gonna have a little hobby knife and your teacher can get underneath that and 
cut that out. Just kind of get in there and cut it out and, and you know, just boom. But be careful not to cut this piece off, okay? That piece, that needs to stay on. The only thing that comes out is the center plug. And sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. Most of the time they are. But if you can't get it out and you're having a hard time with it, bring it over. I can get it out for you. All right, so once that's done, we're gonna take the shock cord and we're gonna slide that through this. See, just like that. See how that, that looks? Holding onto both ends of this. And now what I'm gonna do is I am going to take my loose end. I'm gonna take the loose end and I'm going to bring it over the top. I'm gonna to bring it over the top of the end that's connected to the body tube. Okay, see that? I'm taking it over the top of it. I'm gonna push it around, under, and see how it's behind it. See how it's behind it? And then I'm gonna reach inside that hole, and I'm gonna grab that, hold onto it, and then I'm gonna pull this tight. It's just the way that you tie your shoes. That first knot in your shoes, you just wrap that around and you pull it down tight, okay? Now I'm giving this a tug on this end and then I'm giving that a tug on that end. A um, little bit of advice, try to keep this loose end um, as, as short as possible, but not too short. You don't want it too short because this is going to pull a little bit and you don't want to pull it out. Um, but you don't want, you don't want six inches of this shock cord sticking up there. So that was one time. We're gonna do it two times or three times because we really wanna make sure that this is knotted up good, okay? Because if you don't have a good knot here, it will not be good for your parachute. Ah, see what I did there? Knot, knot, okay. Anyway, let's go back to this. So. Doing the same thing, the exact same thing. This is the part that, that goes to the body tube. This is the loose end. I'm taking it over the top of the body tube side. I'm passing it underneath. So I'm looping it over the top and then coming through the hole. And I'm gonna pull it tight. Pulling that tight. And I'm pulling that tight. Okay, and I'm gonna do this one more time. I'm gonna tie that knot one more time. So, see how I'm looping it over the top? I am passing it underneath and through. And I'm pulling it tight. With three knots in there, I feel very comfortable that that's not going to come out and it should be a good tight knot. So what we have now is the parachute, uh, no, there's no parachute, the body tube attached to your nose cone and it's on a leash, okay? Now we get to attach the parachute. All right, so we're going into our bag. There it is, dun, 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 dun. it's a parachute. Now, we're gonna unfold the parachute. I want you to be very careful about unfolding the parachute. Um, you wanna make sure that we're not gonna cut it and we've got these lines that are on here and those lines, we wanna make sure that those lines don't get tangled up, okay? All right, let's have a, let's have a serious conversation about the parachute as well. Um, kind of like the shock cord serious, all right? Uh, the parachute you guys are gonna be tempted to open this parachute up and you're gonna be tempted to take it and you're gonna be like, I wanna tie it around my pencil, dude, or I wanna tie it onto an eraser. I was gonna grab my eraser over there. I wanna tie it on an eraser and you're gonna to wanna to throw it in the air. You're gonna to wanna to run around in the classroom with it. And... Okay, I get it. I understand that you wanna do that, but I'm, I'm asking you to resist that temptation. Okay, why? Because I have had students that have done that and the parachute flips around and it gets all tangled up and they end up getting it knotted 
accidentally snag it on the corner of a desk and it rips the line out of the parachute. Um, this is for launch day. So we really want to save it for launch day so that you can actually launch. If you bring this to the RSO and they unfold the parachute to prepare it for actual launch and there's a bunch of knots and it won't open, they're gonna hand it back to you and say, no joy, no launch, okay? So your mission's gonna get scrubbed. It's gonna be scrubbed like NASA. You know, and that's not that's not cool because you came you're doing all of this to be able to push that button and watch your rocket go. Uh, so, so I'm I'm just warning you. You know, I know the temptation's going to be there. That's on you now. If you flail that around and it gets knotted up or it gets broken, you have to have a parachute on your rocket. It's just a rule, okay, dude. It's just a rule. Um, you know. And we've got, to, we've got to adhere to those rules when we're out there to keep people safe. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. We, you've, had your, you've had your warning, your little disclaimer. So, all right, let's go. So we're gonna unfold this. We've got our string, and in the parachute world, we call those shroud lines. We're gonna open this all the way up. So it, it comes folded up in this, in this uh, triangle shape. We're gonna unfold, make it a bigger triangle. Um, you know, the math people out there are going, whoa, that's an equilateral triangle. Ooh, that's an isosceles triangle. Um, unfolding this line, unfolding that, pulling that out straight, pulling this one out straight. All right, so notice how the parachute is set up. We've got one of these lines attached to this corner, and we have another line attached to this corner. We've got one here and one here. Okay, I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna place one line over top of my finger like this. The middle line is gonna go over top of this finger, and the outer line on the left-hand side is gonna go over top of that one. So they're all gonna hang over my finger, okay? just like that. Now what I'm gonna do, all of those lines not tangled, I'm gonna grab the very center of my parachute, the very, very center of it, and I'm gonna pull this tight. I'm pinching my fingers together so that I'm catching that line. See, I'll, I'll show you how I did that. So I'm pulling this tight, pinching my fingers together, and now I'm catching it like that, okay? and I'm going to pinch those lines together and I'm gonna hold it right there. Why? Because that's the center of my parachute and that's where I'm going to attach it at. So I'm gonna come down here a little bit. Notice how I've got that loop. I'm just grabbing hold of it right there and I have that loop, okay? So with all those lines all the same length, the parachute is going to open and it's going to come down nice and smooth. If you see a parachute that's doing this in the sky, one of those lines are pulled tighter and the air is dumping out of it and it starts to rotate and spin. And that also makes the parachute rotate and spin and it twists the lines up and it could, it could cause your parachute to get some knots in it. So we do the best that we can to make sure that they're all the same length. Okay, again, do the best that we can. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this and we are going to attach this to the nose cone. We're going to slide that string through the, that opening in that nose cone. See how I'm doing that? I'm sliding it through just like that. And now I'm going to take the opening of this. See how that, that opens up? I'm going to take that opening and I am going to pass the tip of my parachute. There's two different ways you can do it. You can pass the tip of your parachute through like that and then pull it the rest of the way or you can pull this out and you can pass the nose cone through it. 
I kind of like passing the nose cone through it. It's a little bit easier. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so we're going to take this, we're going to pass the nose cone through it. We're going to bring all of those lines all the way back. Grabbing hold of our parachute, we're going to pull that tight. Okay. Dude, you've got a rocket ready to launch. All right, you've got a rocket ready to launch. You've got your parachute attached to your nose cone. Your nose cone is attached to the shock cord. The shock cord is attached to the body tube. And I can feel that glue in there already. It's getting almost dry. And when that is completely dry, tomorrow we'll set this all up. And I believe that Mr. Horbath is going to probably come in and he's going to uh, show you how to properly pack all of this. You probably are not going to pack your own parachute when you're out there uh, because they, they do some stuff with the parachutes to make sure that they open properly. Um, but you'll probably bring it out and they'll take the parachute out. They'll put some recovery wadding and he'll talk to you all about that stuff. Um, so, but he'll do a video for you and explain how to properly pack it because you need to know how to do this stuff when you're when you're at home too so because the whole idea is to teach you how to build these things so you can go home and launch these at home with your family and show your parents how how fun this is um, so dude if you put this all together if you put it all together man you got yourself a rocket don't you you know and and it's really cool looking stuff, right? It's, it's fun. Was it really, really that hard? No, dude, it wasn't hard at all. Just those little steps and the little tricks in it, not hard to build one at all. Um, and, and so you're ready to go. All right, so, man, I don't wanna say goodbye, but I'm done. You, you've done it all, man, you've, you've got this. Just remember, take care of that parachute. You know, don't don't fling it around. Keep it keep it nice, and uh, because you know we want you to be able to get out there on rocket day and launch your rocket. All right. So I am gonna leave him a little note, and I'm gonna have to head out. I can't believe that it's already time to go, but I'm, I'm leaving him with a little bit of a surprise, and and I. I think he's going to love this. Check this out. Uh, for the Red Devil Rocketry, uh, I, I bought him another rocket for, for that group. Check this out, man. He's going to have so much fun. This is a 29 millimeter rocket, so he'll be able to put uh, uh, F engines in it, maybe some G engines, and send it. Yeah, man send it. So, you know, if you're part of the Red Devil Rocketry group that goes out the first Saturday of every month, you know, you'll be seeing this out there and you'll be going, I know who gave that to you. Yeah. So, all right, little dudes, that's it. Those are the surprises that I have for him. And I'm just going to let this sit right here like this with the parachute looking all nice and pretty. And I'm going to head on out. So, I am saying farewell, goodbye, safe launching, bye guys. <laughs>